Well, welcome everybody. It is Friday, March 27th, and it is uh, day, I guess I don't know how many days of quarantine or lockdown for us. Uh, last show I did was uh, March 15th, so now I suppose it's been 12 days, but really it's only six, uh, um, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven shows. So I missed eleven shows, and um, so anyway, we're back. Uh, Facebook Live. That's the only contact I've been having uh, with humans. I don't know how you guys are doing out there, uh, but it's uh, you know. Anyway, all right. Welcome on board. I got a bunch of people that are following here. I'm going to try to go through some of the questions. If um, if you've asked your question, I will scroll through. So you don't need to ask it seventeen times. Uh, I will get to it, I hope, um, but I'm gonna go in order. So, uh, all right, see a bunch of people signed in. That's wonderful, from different areas. All right, did I know you were gonna watch this? No, I did not, Joe, because I am a hypnotist, not a mentalist. I don't read people's minds. I get in and I, I mess them up a little bit. That's what I do. Uh, all right, so, uh, all right, a couple of things, some, some housekeeping things, uh, obviously, um, Oh, here, Jamie's already got a question. Uh, Jamie Saunders, do you use progressive relaxation induction in your performances? Do you utilize shorter inductions when not entertaining? That is a great question. Uh, in my Vegas show, I use a combination of a couple of things. I use a progressive relaxation, and I also use a bucket and balloon type uh, induction where you feel the bucket getting heavy and the balloons getting lighter. And that is basically an overload. I want their, their conscious mind active and participating and the subconscious mind begins to produce the result based on the suggestions. And then I'll go into a progressive relaxation. For those of you who don't know what that is, progressive relaxation is when you relax, oh, from the, your toes up into your you know, feet and you, you know, into your calves and your knees and you continue to, to progressively relax the body. A lot of hypnotists will start in the mind and they'll go down to the feet. I don't do it that way and here's the reason why. When you're starting earlier, there's a lot going on in their mind, they're thinking about a thing, they're nervous, there's so on and so forth. So I like to go from the toes up getting to the most important part of the relaxation, which is the mind. So that's why I prefer to go from the bottom up in progressive relaxation. Then I'll do a challenge, some type of a challenge, like an arm clasp uh, or a hand clasp rather, they can't pull their hands apart. And I wanna use a challenge because what happens when they're successful in passing that challenge, well, there's, I mean, there's really no pass or fail, but, but when they cannot pull their hands apart, there's a deepening by realization that happens where the mind goes, oh, I can't do this. This is real. Clearly an issue uh, with how the mind is responding. Wow, I must be deeply hypnotized. So that's kind of the reason why I use, hold on one second, I just need to uh, turn off my notifications. I don't wanna get a phone call through this live. All right, so that's why the, um, the, the challenge works well with the deepening. And so a combination of all of those. Now in a private one-on-one -on -one session when I'm dealing with a client, I will use whatever technique the client is sort of um, accepting or they're gonna respond to. Sometimes I'll do rapid inductions. I'll do like a, a hand uh, a pressing technique. Sometimes I'll just do an eye fixation, look at my eyes. Uh, sometimes I'll use a frying pan, uh, no, uh, induction. So it depends on the situation, but yeah, for the show, I use kind of a shotgun approach, which is a combination of, of a re relaxation, uh, an overload uh, induction, because there's two things that cause people to go into hypnosis. We've talked about this already, fatigue of the nervous system or overload of the nervous system. So I kind of use a combination of both. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, how did I like the maple leaf cookies and the t-shirt? Uh, we talked about this last week. I ate the entire bag of maple uh, cookies that uh, Mark brought from Canada. Uh, and um, I ate them, I believe in like less than 18 hours. I ate them all myself. I did not share them with the kids. I did not share them with Kate. I, so if they're watching this, I'm so sorry, not sorry. I ate them all. And the t-shirt I wore, I think on Tuesday. So uh, it's great. It's, thank you very much. Uh, I saw that you said you once hypnotized your wife during childbirth. How does that work? Great question, Tiffany. Um, there's also some hypnosis in the conception too. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm kidding. Uh, with <laughs> two things ha can happen when you're dealing with pain. You can turn off 
the receptors in how your body receives the information at the receptor, the pain receptor, or you can turn off the part of the brain with how it's reading the signal. So there's the two different points that you can kind of work with it. With painless childbirth or dealing with um, hypnobirthing, there's a couple of things that happen. First off, as a woman who gets, uh, when a woman gets pregnant, uh, they become a magnet for horror stories. And so that gets programmed into their mind. When they're standing in line at the grocery store and another woman sees, you know, the pregnant lady uh, checking out with her groceries and she's, you know, almost a term uh, with the pregnancy, immediately they say, oh, you're pregnant. Oh, I was in labor for two days and I couldn't, right? That tends to be the nature of humans is that we want to tell them, the that's nothing story. Oh, that's nothing. Wait till you hear my story. But rarely do we hear women say to other pregnant uh, women, oh yeah, my, my delivery was easy and it was awesome and it was so wonderful. And so the, naturally we lean towards the negative programming. So that's all the information that gets taken in from the pregnant lady. So part of the hypnobirthing process is to remove some of that, that preconceived ideas and remove some of the negative programming and you know obviously uh, put in some positive uh, ideas into the subconscious mind then we also deal with how we manage pain and we do something called glove anesthesia or at least that's what i do in in my hypnobirthing program where you can make your hand feel numb light limp loose lazy in kind of a numb anesthesia feeling to it and then move that anesthesia to different parts of your body and the mind responds really well because here the mind has more medicine in, in the body uh, than any pharmacy could ever sell you it's a matter of just tapping into that and uh, so that's uh, basically how that works so my my ex when we had our four children delivered all four babies using hypnosis as the only anesthesia and she really is a legend at the hospital uh, when we uh, go back and talk to some of the people. When we went back for our fourth child. Uh, they said, oh, what's your birthing plan? And the nurse uh, was new there. And she goes, well, I'm doing uh, hypnobirthing. And she goes, oh, okay. And have you done that before? Yeah, with all of the other children. She goes, wait, are you the one? And we're like, what? Well, we heard there's a girl that was in here that delivered all of the babies. And we're like, yeah. And she goes, oh my God, I heard about you. And, and so it was really amazing. Matter of fact, on the first child, uh, it happened so quickly um, and uh, so she actually had some fourth degree tearing. So those of you who are familiar with that uh, know how severe that is. Um, and the doctor needed to do some stitch work and he did all the stitch work uh, on her with no local anesthesia, no regular painkillers, nothing, just hypnosis. And here she is holding the baby and he's doing the stitch work and I'm watching the doctor do it. Uh, Dr. Norton was his name, and uh, his hand was shaking because it just did not compute in his mind how that would be possible. And she was, and he was basically reconstructing, um, you know, that area. It was phenomenal. So that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, my ex Joanna has incredible mind power that nobody else can tap into. That's not true. Everyone can tap into that mind power. It's just good to have a, a good coach. Anyway. All right, next, single malt neat or with ice? Neither. Uh, I am, uh, I haven't had a drop of alcohol since September of 2017. So not because I had a drinking problem. Uh, I never had a drinking problem ever. I, you know, I've only been in little tipsy, you know, a couple of you know, dozen times in my entire life. So, but I didn't feel well when I, drank alcohol, I think I'm allergic to something and I'm not sure and there was never really any pattern. Sometimes I could drink a Mai Tai in Hawaii and be absolutely fine and go to another place and drink another Mai Tai and be absolutely crippled over halfway through the drink with like almost like an ulcer feeling type thing. So I just stopped drinking, it was, it was just never worth it. Uh, so yeah, September will be three years uh, that I haven't touched a drop of alcohol and I feel fantastic. So. Yeah, so no alcohol, virgin, virgin drinks. Uh, Jeff is asking, what age did I know hypnotism would be your path in life? Uh, I didn't. I actually was uh, in college trying to get into med school and I saw a hypnotism show at a nightclub and the guy's name was Preston. It was Preston, the hypnotist. Uh, and 
I was just kind of curious about how that worked. I wanted to understand how you could use words to influence and change someone's behavior just by using the power of words. It made no sense to me. So I started doing reading and research on it, and then my friends got wind of it and saw me reading a book uh, in the Central Academic Building in the University of Alberta. Uh, so when we're in the cab building and I'm reading a book on hypnosis, and they ask, oh, you're, you're reading hypnosis, do you want to hypnotize us? And I said, sure, I did, and uh, I want to. <laughs> and they came. I had three people come over to my apartment, the girl I was dating at the time, and her name was Michelle, and two of her friends, Joan and Heather. And so I, during the very first time I'm doing hypnosis, I'm actually reading from a book. And I'm going through, you know, your eyes are getting heavy, very tired. You can feel them getting very, very relaxed. You feel the heaviness going through. That it was absolutely that ridiculous. I'm not even kidding you. And I didn't even know about you know, the full depth of what I was learning uh, at that time. I hadn't even been to the awakening procedure. And then I said, one, two, three, sleep. And Heather was sitting in the middle of Joan and Michelle and Heather slumps over, goes deeply into hypnosis. And immediately, I, I, I think I threw the book. I was like, ah, oh, oh. like, I mean, I, I immediately panicked. It was exciting, but yet, uh, you know, how do I wake him up? How do I wake him up? I haven't read that part yet. So going through the book, it's comical and looking back at it now. I don't recommend learning that way. I recommend taking my course. On, on April 1st, the first video comes out. We're doing an online version. Uh, so yeah, take my course. That's the better way to learn. Uh, but yeah, so I never really knew it was going to be my path in life. I first wanted to get into the uh, Air Force. I wanted to fly an F-18 Hornet. That was kind of my dream all growing up as from a child a childhood. I wanted to be a pilot, a uh, fighter pilot. And I failed the pilot eye test with my left eye. And at that time, laser eye surgeries weren't acceptable. And so I, I got denied and uh, bawled my eyes out for a couple of days and then decided to go to school and maybe want to help people and get into med school. And here we are today. So it was never a choice. Uh, all right. Do I miss Grimshaw? Jen Woods asking. Do I miss Grimshaw? How, uh, <laughs> how have I been, old friend? I, nice to see you, Jen. I, I miss the people. Growing up in a, a town of 2,800 people, you knew everybody. You know, everybody, you knew all their families, you knew their, their cousins, you knew, you knew everybody. And so I miss the small town feel and I miss the people, some wonderful people. Do I miss the town? No, I mean, there's nothing, you know, it's a town of 20, 100 people. Uh, and I think the population always stayed the same. It never changed, right? 20, 100 people. I don't know if the sign's still the same, you know, probably because girl got pregnant and guy left town and girl got pregnant and guy left town and it kept it kind of consistent. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, uh, I miss the people. I, it's been forever since I've been back there. I'd like to maybe one day bring my kids and drive them through the town. And they've been born in Vegas, uh, born and raised in Vegas, so they'll probably think it's an absolute joke to go back there. I think we had one street light when I was growing up. Uh, okay, a couple of people saying hello, hello. Um, would I ever come home to the home to your roots and give us a good show for Peace Fest? I mean, I would consider. Uh, it makes it difficult. Um, you know, because anytime I go all the way back up to Canada for uh, for shows, I really lose three shows in Vegas. It was like a travel one day up with connections, flying all the way up to the North Peace country in Alberta, and then doing the show and then coming home. So it, it's, it makes it financially not really worth it. I mean, it's hard for small areas to, to compete, you know, so it makes it difficult. So when I do come up, I tend to just come up to enjoy my family and just to have some time off. So that makes a lot more sense. I mean, it's not to say that I won't come back and do that. Who knows, maybe, maybe Vegas will never reopen and I'll be, uh, you know, touring again, who knows. Uh, hockey, what hockey team is my all time favorite outside of the Golden Knights? Everyone knows the answer to this. It is the Edmonton Oilers. I am a huge Edmonton Oilers fan. I do like the Golden Knights a lot. Uh, you know, we have family connection in with one of the players there with uh, Shade Theodore. You know, related through marriage, but uh, so I'm a hockey fan. Uh, true and true, I like all the teams, but Edmonton is my team. All uh, right, how do we know you're not hypnotizing all of us watching right now? You don't know that, Brent. You do not know that. It could be, you never know, but except not me hypnotizing, it's the girl. Watch your eyes. It's actually a lenticular printing, so you can see it moves. It's pretty cool. It's a really cool, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so you don't know, I could be hypnotizing. 
Uh, how do people like the Savar t-shirt I got you? Yeah, of course, they, we talked about this. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I got a Serge Savar t-shirt from Mark. Thank you very much for the gift, it was really nice. Uh, and the Ford that I was driving in the video is a Ford Explorer Sport uh, because between Kate and I, we've got five girls. Five girls and we gotta haul them around so we put them in the sport utility and that's how we get them around. Uh, Margo is asking, you hypnotized me seven years ago in Las Vegas. Um, is it true more creative people are more compatible to be hypnotized? Nope, that's not true. That's not true at all. Matter of fact, um, everyone can be hypnotized. Some people respond different uh, to different techniques than others. It just depends on uh, what's going on um, in their mind, if they're more visual, if they're more auditory, or if they're more kinesthetic with touch. It just depends on the individual. But more creative people tend to make better volunteers because ultimately that's what we're doing. We're I'm turning it into a show, right? So that's the most important thing. So anyway, um, all right. Um, some of these comments I'm losing. I'm trying to keep them in track, but it's acting weird. Uh, okay, hi from the UK. I've seen you once in Las Vegas, loved it. My question is, is it harder to do your show if you only have all me, all men? Uh, maybe there's a letter missing, or all me. It'd be very difficult to do the show with just you, Corinda, but maybe you're saying all men or all women. That happens, it happens quite often. I would say every couple of months, I might end up with a performance where it's all women on stage, or I might end up with a performance with all men. It just depends on who's volunteering, uh, how they're responding to hypnosis. Uh, but no, I modify the show with uh, what we're dealing with. I like it better with a mix between uh, men and women. I did a show one time, the craziest show ever, it was at, it was up in Alberta, Canada. It was in Grand Prairie and it was called the Women's Were Worth It event. And there was like, I don't know, 600 or 700 women. And it, their theme was like lingerie. So all the decor was like lingerie and, you know, stuff. And it was about women and being you know, out of the house and free and fun. And it was, they had sex toys that were selling and whatever, it was fun. Well, I started doing the show and they were nuts. They were absolutely crazy. There, I was doing this uh, unstripper routine where you seductively put clothes back on. It was silly, it was a fun routine they used to do. Well, they start grabbing all the decor and they start putting it on me and dressing me up. And there's this very strong, <laughs> this word, lady grabs me, lifts me up and another one's putting pants on me and women's underwear and oh my God, it was a gong show. I don't even know if I have the video of it somewhere. Maybe I should look through. I might, I might have the video of it. Oh my God, it was an absolute gong show, it was crazy. And then a couple of years ago, I did a show for uh, Pure Romance, which is the home sex toy company. And they did a, a show uh, for their conference. It was about, I don't know, I don't know how many people, a couple thousand people. And also, it was crazy. So who wants to volunteer? And I'm trying to pick people, and my assistants went out to pick people. Well, they just rushed the stage. Uh, we had to security, there was lucky there was security there, had to like block them from coming up on the stage. It was like a rock show, it was so crazy. So when I have all men, the show's fun, the volunteers are crazy, but when it's all women, oh my goodness, it's out of control. They are, you guys are wild, um, but it's really a lot of fun. Um, Rob Gow is asking, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen sparrow? Rob, have you been in the sauce again? Good to see you. It's been forever since I've seen you. Um, okay. Carrie Sharp's asking, do I still water ski? No, it's been forever. I, uh, for those of you who don't know the background, uh, all through my uh, uh, kid years and my teenage years, I was a competitive water skier. I used to compete in slalom, trick skiing, jump skiing, and sometimes barefoot, but I didn't compete in barefoot. Uh, that was just more for fun. And I competed on a national level. And I had, you know, some sponsors like Oakley Sunglasses and HO High Output Sports and Body Glove Wetsuits and uh, did some coaching camps and development camps. And that was really kind of my job. We'd start skiing like beginning of May and there was still snow on the beach. Uh, and, but the ice was uh, let off of the lake and we would put on dry suits so it would be sealed up around. But the water, they never worked. The water would always get in. It'd be the worst if it shot in for the back of your neck and that ice cold water that's just slightly warmer than freezing. And you'd get serious shrivel up to you know? I mean, it was, it was cold. Like your fingers were like blue and your lips were 
blue, but we would ski <laughs> like the second week of May and all the way through until after Labor Day weekend in September. And uh, man, it was, I mean, I was on the, on the water almost every day and uh, it, was, it was awesome. It was a, probably the best childhood and teenage years I could ever have. And, and uh, so yeah, but I haven't skied since I broke my back in a car crash. Uh, I think I had skied like twice or three times. And what happens is, it's not that I couldn't enjoy skiing, but when, if I find that when you ski at a high level and then when you go back out and you just can't even compete or even perform anywhere near what you used to because of one time, two, old, three, out of shape before uh, breaking my back and a back injury. So you, I get frustrated and that's my own problem where, you know, so going out and just, you know, weekend wallying, you know, weekend warrior, warrior skiing, um, it's just not as appealing uh, to me, you know, but, uh, but this summer I'm going to head to um, the shoe swap in British Columbia and with my kids and we'll uh, do some skiing, some type, either wakeboarding or, you know, something. Uh, all right. Carrie Sharp, do alumni get access to the online training? Uh, we've been still talking about that. We're working it through, possibly. Um, possibly going to have access to some type of thing. Uh, yeah, so email us. We'll talk about that. Um, all right, so uh, Corinda, you cleared up your question. I think I answered it. Um, Ross, hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well as well. Steve Haas, thank you so much for stopping in. Um, <laughs> can imagine you're bored like the rest of us. Uh, we've got five children, so <laughs> getting bored is not really, you know, what's happening to us. They're bored, but we're not, you know, so we're not bored. Mark Cummings, hello, old neighbor. Yes, Mark Cummings, I have a beef to pick with you. Uh, you live next door to me in Peace River, Alberta until I left after first grade and then move over to the second grade. I moved over to Grimshaw. But during that time, you and the neighbor on the other side, Rob Adair and the Marceau boys from across the street, I used to, you, I mean, you guys are, you're quite a bit older than me. Well, not that much older, but five or six years, six years, seven years older than me. You guys used to play hockey and I was this little four or five year old that wanted to play with you guys. And knowing, you know, I was like the dirtiest player on the entire street. And it's not because I would, you know, hook or stick or slash. You guys didn't want me to play. You know, I was always in the way because I was so small. So I, you guys gave me penalties all the time. And that's like a... a yeah, that is so not fair. Now, looking back in years, I was a clean player, but you guys were making up penalties. God damn it. Anyway, it's good to see you up here. Uh, Darcy, hey, I miss you. I miss you too. Uh, Cody, how many more years will you perform in Vegas? I don't know. Um, it's been 13 years. Uh, the contract's indefinite. Um, you know, the theater and I, and the theater producers, we kind of have, you know, it's like, well, let's just keep going until it's not making money. Who knows what's going to happen in Vegas? Maybe Vegas doesn't rebound. Maybe I don't reopen. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe I go back on the road. Maybe I do corporate lecturing. Maybe I just do coaching and consulting. I don't know. Uh, but my intent is to open. I might continue. The reason why I started in Vegas was it was nice to be around my children as they were growing up. Uh, I had My first daughter was born um, in July of 2004. 2004 and... I went on the, I was home for two months when she was born. Then I went on the road for two months and I came back and she was four months old. And I was so excited to see her and opened the car door and I'm like, hi, daddy's home. And she just started screaming because she didn't recognize me and know who I was. So that broke my heart. And that was in my mind, I'm like, okay, no more, no more road traveling. I want to be home when the kids are young. So that was the whole purpose. And my youngest is going to be seven uh, in August and it's a little easier that if you had to go away for bits and pieces in time, but again, you know, maybe we'll wait a little bit longer. We'll see. Uh, but the, my intent is to reopen and, and I don't know, maybe another year or two or three or five. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. All right. What was the smallest group you ever did a show for? Well, one-on-one -on -one private sessions isn't really a show, but uh, probably the very first time I hypnotized uh, someone, there was just three people. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure when you got on here, but uh, yeah, it was uh, the girl I was dating, Michelle, her friends, Joan and Heather. It was just three people in the very first time. Heather got hypnotized deeply and I did a little mini show with two people watching. So that was probably the smallest group. It wasn't a paid gig, obviously, but... Uh, Dave's asking, you're going crazy without ketchup chips and coffee crisp. Uh, I have a stash. Uh, I have a stash of 
I'm out of ketchup chips and coffee crisps, but I have a stash of Big Turks. I have a stash of cherry blossoms. I have a stash of hickory sticks. I have a stash of popcorn twists. And I have a stash of arrow bars. And I have a stash of Smarties. So I'm, I'm good right now. Uh, but anyone who's coming from Canada, eventually when Vegas reopens, you know, make sure you throw some stuff in your bag because I'll accept everything. Leanne's asking, who's my favorite cousin? Oh, that's such a tough one because Dave Lavoie's on here, you're on here, now you're putting me in a bad situation. So how about 50-50 split? You're my favorite female cousin, he's my favorite male cousin, how about that? Got to start a riot. Uh, Coach and Judy, hey guys, how are you? I hope uh, Coach is feeling better. I know he injured himself. I uh, hope he's uh, on the, on the, 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 the mend. Uh, keep sending people to see you. Thanks, Mark Cummings. That doesn't still justify why you threw me in the penalty box all those years. Um, can you hypnotize the viewers to chill out right now? God damn it, chill out, you guys. Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't know why we're chilling out. But everyone's chill. We're cool. We got nothing to do. What are you going to do? Go to work? Everyone's lost their jobs. You got no money. You know, just keep paying your internet connections. You <laughs> keep joining me. Uh, Mark Nussbaum's, uh, Nussbaum is asking, what's my favorite Royal Caribbean ship? Once in a while, when I take some breaks from Vegas, I have a connection with the entertainment department on Royal Caribbean. And when I take four or five days off because of a huge convention like CES, uh, Consumer Electronics Show, or the car show, um, the, um, the SEMA car show, or NAB, National Association of Broadcasters, lots of people come into town for these conventions, but they don't go to shows. So shows don't really do all that well. So if I'm gonna take a break, I take a break then. And then I usually fly out of town and jump on a cruise ship and do a show and get a little mini vacation. The Royal Caribbean fleet, they have all kinds of great ships. My favorites are the Oasis class, which are the huge, huge mega ships because there's lots to do and it's really a lot of fun. And they also redesigned the, or refurbished the Navigator and that's also a really great ship, but it's a smaller ship. Uh, hello, Warren, Adrian, oh, I remember you come into my school in Maidstone, Saskatchewan when I was in seventh grade. Wow, Maidstone, Saskatchewan. Uh, that's crazy, that was a long time ago. Uh, what was that, 18, 20 years ago? Jeez. Jim Turner, hey Jim, uh, come on over and use the pool anytime you're ready. Uh, it's been forever since I've seen you. Okay, my screen just jumped. I think I missed some people. Uh, all right. Ken saying hypnotize people to stop hoarding, hoarding toilet paper. We're only three or four or five days away from the stocks getting back up because how much can people really wipe their asses? Uh, Sean says it's way easier looking at Kate than you. Just saying. You hear that, Kate? No. Sean's giving me shit. I think you have to block him off your Instagram. Uh, all right, you hypnotized me 12 years ago in Vegas. Sweet, that's cool. I uh, hope to come back and do it again. Um, okay, once a week in UK, this isolation and my poor dog can't cope. <laughs> hope you're well, sorry for your dog. <laughs> oh yeah, cheesies, I also have cheesies. Mark saying that we need cheesies. Uh, cheesies in Canada, yeah, I have a stack of cheesies. I do have a stack, I promise I do. I probably have, I don't know, eight or 10 bags, big bags. All right. Uh, Rob, uh, Rob Gow, all jokes aside, it's wonderful what you did for the one audience member who had a stutter. Hats off. Hope you guys stay safe. Uh, any coffee crisps? Um, as I said earlier, I don't have coffee crisps. Yeah, the guy who uh, was stuttering, his name is David, and he, uh, I have some video of us doing a session together. He responded really well, did something on stage, and he contacted me through social media and he says, that was crazy, it worked so well. Two days later or something, a day later, a couple of days later, I got into a, a very high anxiety situation and my stutter came back. Uh, that's crazy how that happens, just went away. And I said, well, come to Vegas and let's do an actual real session instead of just a quick, a quick fix. So he flew to Vegas and we did a real session and I think it's been a couple of, two and a half years probably. Um, if David's watching, maybe he can chime in. But he hasn't stuttered. And it's so funny because the first thing he did immediately after that was he sent me videos of himself going through drive through because he could never order food at a drive through fast food joint uh, because he would stutter all the time. So he would go into the place and he would type it on his phone and then just kind of show them the phone and then they'd take his order. So he, showed, he sends me videos of him going through drive through 
ordering, and he, of course, he biggie sizes the fries because you have to, right? So anyway, uh, it was really cool. So maybe I'll see if I can dig out some of those videos and put something together for you guys and put it on my uh, YouTube channel. Love your show. Thank you very much. I uh, hope everyone rebounds. Stay safe. Yes, I think Vegas is going to rebound uh, probably the quickest in the United States because when they decide to open the doors, it'll be like, we're open. You can have hotel rooms for free. Uh, no resort fees, no parking. Just come on down. And that would be a smart thing for them to do because they can make the money off the gambling. Not a lot of businesses can do that or they can give so much for free. Um, and Vegas needs to go back to that. Uh, do you ever have any hard time waking anyone up? Uh, how long did it took to wake them up. Now people, the reason why they don't want to come out of hypnosis is because being in hypnosis has a better advantage than being out of hypnosis. So if you just find what that is, um, so usually I'll say, hey, I understand you like hypnosis, you like this feeling, I'll let you get back to this feeling and teach you how to do this on your own. Um, is that agreeable to you? Yeah, okay, come out of hypnosis, let's talk after the show. And usually that's enough to get them out of hypnosis, so. All right. Uh, best poutine in Vegas. God, my thing, my thing scrolls up, so I and I can't get back to the comments, so I am missing some of these. Uh, all right, I'm so sorry. Best poutine in Vegas. Those of you who don't know what poutine is, it's uh, French fries and cheese curds and gravy, and I think it's terrible because I don't like cheese curds, so I don't even like poutine. I'm never, I don't even never had it. I don't care about it, and yeah, that's why I've been kicked out of Canada and I live in the U.S. Um. Carrie Sharp, you were sick a few years ago. Do you completely recover? Uh, not exactly. I have an adrenal issue, an irregulation with uh, hormones and an adrenal issue, but that I continue to uh, struggle with, but I've been feeling dramatically better. Energy levels have been much better, and uh, I'm getting sleep, uh, which makes a difference. Um, yeah, so I have, uh, yeah. Actually, I got a funny story for you. Well, it's not that funny, but it's funny. Part of the reason why I was struggling so much was sleep patterns. And when Kate and I started dating, uh, she spent the night one night, and the very first night she spends the night, I, I wake up the next morning, she goes, I'm like, how'd you sleep? And she goes, not well, you know that you stop breathing in your sleep. I'm like, what? And so I decided to go get some uh, testing for uh, sleep. So here, here's a hypnotist who couldn't sleep. How funny is that? And I had to go to a sleep study, and turns out that I have sleep apnea, and I have two different kinds. I have, part, partly I have the obstruction, but mostly I have central sleep apnea where my brain just stops telling my body to breathe. So that is a problem. When that happens, you stop getting oxygen, your body stops breathing, you stop getting oxygen, and then your heart rate starts to go up. It goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, because it's trying to circulate and get more oxygenated blood to your brain. So your heart rate just goes up and eventually you just take a gasp in of air. And during that sleep study test, I was reaching 120 beats a minute that my heart was beating. So, aero, you know, as far as aerobatic, uh, aerobic, aerobic uh, uh, heart rate, I mean, obviously, uh, I was in, I was running a marathon basically every night. So when I wake up in the morning, of course, I was exhausted. And it's so funny because it never made sense to me. Around that time, just before that time, uh, my ex. And the kids were like, okay, hey, let's go run a 5K. And I'm like, ah, oh, 5K, I haven't ran since high school. I didn't like it then, I'm not gonna like it now. But it was for a good cause and taking all the kids and let's just go do that. And my youngest, Laurel, was still in a stroller. <laughs> and I just ran the 5K, pushing a stroller. And I didn't stop. And <laughs> I put an incredibly fast time. And it made no sense. Uh, you know, my ex at the time was like, I don't know how you just ran that 5K with zero training and you haven't ran in 20 years. And, but obviously, you know, aerobically, my heart was running a marathon every night. And so I ran the 5K pushing a stroller. And, uh, but anyway, so I've got the sleep issue sort of fixed. So now I get a lot more rest and that helps. However, doing a show late at night, uh, getting in bed at 12.30 or one, and then waking up at, 6.15 to take the kids to school. I, I mean, it, after this is, so this break from doing shows is really doing me some wonders. I feel fantastic. Uh, Don says, speaking of favorites, who's your favorite nanny? Of course you, Don. Uh, hands down favorite. I love you. Um, I just wish my kids were smaller. Uh, then you could come back. Um, anyway, uh, best show ever, thanks. Uh, best strip club in Vegas, Bartley's asking. Uh, you know, so I've heard. 
Spearman Rhino, actually, I know the manager there, a good friend of mine. So Spearman Rhino is the best strip club in Vegas. However, it's closed. Everything's closed. Um, all right. Um, your Mark, my cousin lives in Sherbrooke. Okay, cool. Uh, it's the other end of the country. I'm from Alberta and Sherbrooke's from way out east. All right, I answered that question. Okay. I need to do this even when my shows are back to normal. Um, well, maybe, maybe we will. I mean, this is, this has been fun. It's been keeping, uh, you know, uh, it's been keeping me entertained. So appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, Canada, Canada is a huge country. What province is Sherbrooke? Or Sherbrooke, Quebec. It's in Quebec, uh, the French part, uh, Quebec. All my, um, my grandparents are from Quebec, uh, Chicoutimi, uh, Lac Saint-Jean, Trois-Rivières, all those areas in Quebec. So for you Frenchies out there, thank you for joining me. Okay, um, gonna, am I gonna do private shows for anxiety again? Um, the private sessions, you mean? Uh, private sessions. I haven't been taking any clients for private sessions, but my partner, Kate, who is a hypnotherapist uh, and does private sessions, she uh, has been taking clients. So you need to email her uh, her email address is hypnosis at kate, K-A-T-E, Sheeler, S-H-E-L-O-R dot com. Hypnosis at kate Sheeler dot com. Email her and then you can do like a consultation with her. It doesn't cost anything for that consultation. All right. I made your 30th birthday awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad. Happy birthday, whenever that was. Ever vacation in California, North Bay area? No, uh, not vacation. I've been through there um, quite a few times. I did some shows up there, but not uh, not vacationing. But I'd like to. I mean, you know, a lot of my vacations are working vacations. Usually, I go and do a show somewhere. Somebody flies me out somewhere and, and do a performance and stay a day or two or something like that. Um, uh, Dan Merton's asking, Mark, are you and Brent still using your daughter's toy <laughs> to record stuff? Uh, <laughs> Brent came to Vegas one time when I was doing a class and he, a lot of the students said, hey, we wanna hear some of your music. He's a music designer and uh, we wanna buy some of your music. So we needed an iPad, iPod player at the time. This is, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. And my daughter had this little pig and it was so, Brent was mixing music, high quality uh, level music on this playing pink pig. So I think we called it Pink Pig Productions. Uh, it was what named, anyway, it was hysterical. So, uh, but there was some good music, wasn't it? Uh, all right. It, Ashley, you no more resort fees. I'll be there either way. Hopefully there's no more resort fees. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Brinton Anderson's asking, hey, you hypnotized me at your show a couple of years ago. And at the end of the show, you yanked down on my arm to snap me out of it, but you didn't do it to anyone else. Was I just in a deeper state than everyone else? I, it's probably because you're not mentally stable. I'm kidding, Brinton, that's not the truth. Uh, maybe you are. What happens is sometimes people will hold on to a suggestion of them being tired and they miss some of the awakening sequence. There's no problem, there's no danger. If you would have left the building, you'd kind of come out of hypnosis on your own uh, you know, after a short period of time. Uh, one, five, 10, 15 minutes after not hearing my suggestions, you hear the music, you'd eventually merge on your own when your friends and the normality starts setting in, or you fall into sleep into a regular sleep cycle and wake up on your own and at that point. So there's no real danger. If someone still holds a suggestion of being relaxed or still sleeping, they can enter a hypnosis very quickly from the hypnotist by doing some type of suggestion uh, to sleep or whatever, and then just do an improper emerging uh, technique. And that's all that happens. So it happens sometimes, you know, not often, but it happens sometimes. Uh, Contreras, funny, because I still think I'm the sucker lollipop champ of the world as I hypnotized in Vegas, the best. Uh, now the, uh, the lollipop licking champion, I mean, if you were the last one up there, you were the, we should have like a, uh, a suck off, like championship suck off, where you bring all the winners from the past shows and let them all <laughs> be together and see, see who can uh, deliver. But now that everyone's uh, quarantined at home, I hope you're all practicing your skills. <laughs> uh, what kind of technique, Demi's asking, what kind of technique do I use and does it work on someone? What would you do? Uh, I use all kinds of different techniques. Primarily in Vegas for the show, I use as I mentioned, progressive relaxation and a little bit of overload techniques. 
But in a one-on-one -on -one session and in my class that I'm gonna be teaching online, I do multiple different techniques and uh, teach you guys some of those. Because, you know, like if you have a toolbox, you know, you have a lot of different tools and they all do different things. So you have to kind of think in that mindset because if you don't, then, you know, if the only tool you have is a, a hammer, then everything starts looking like a nail. Uh, so that's what you want to make sure that uh, you adjust. All right. Um, Chris Kidd, late to the party other than your own. What's your favorite shows in Vegas? Great question, Chris Kidd. Uh, I enjoy Absinthe. I have a lot of friends who perform in that show. Absinthe is crazy. It's like a European circus done on a 10-foot round stage. That's a lot of fun. Uh, Carrot Top, if you may not like his movies and you may not like his commercials from back in the day, but his live stand-up comedy show is fantastic. And Scott is also a good buddy of mine. and He's a really nice guy. So if you haven't seen Carrot Top, when he opens, go see him. Uh, so I really like those, uh, those shows uh, a lot. Uh, Gordy Brown's a buddy of mine. He does an impersonating show. He's always great. So... Uh, all right, let's see. Um, you guys are, okay, uh, you guys are, got lots of great questions. Um, Jill, so we met through Hal Sparks' uh, show. Uh, great stress relief. Ah, oh, yes, thank you for watching uh, when I was on the Hal's kind of YouTube radio show thing. Uh, Hal's a great guy, funny comedian, and a uh, really nice person, and I had a chance to call a dear friend. Uh, his girlfriend, Summer, has been working with my show for almost 10 years, so um, maybe 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, so it's a long time. Um, question from Chris. I know you've helped people lose weight. What is the record weight loss of people you have helped? I don't know, because I don't always hear back from people, but I do know there was a woman uh, in Calgary who had lost 90 pounds uh, using hypnosis, and so that was quite something. Um, and, but yeah, I, I do hear from people, you know, 20, 30, 40 pounds, but 90, I think is the record, um, that I'm aware of, but I, I don't know because not everyone, you know, we sell, I don't know, 50 times more programs than we hear back from people. So, uh, Barb says, see myself four times. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much for sending people back. All right. Um, let's wrap this up. I know it's been uh, 45 minutes. I try to keep these about a half an hour. We'll do it again next Friday. I mean, I, uh, I think. Keep an eye on my Facebook and my Instagram. I'll let you guys know if we'll be back. Uh, but also, um, reminder, I'm teaching an online version of my Hypnosis 101 class. If you want to jump in on that, if you want to learn hypnosis, um, talk to uh, you know your significant other and uh, work that out where one of you can be the hypnotist and one of you is the hypnotizee and you guys work with each other and stuff. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. If you want to take that class, email us. Uh, and through my website. And um, if you have any questions about hypnosis or about um, techniques or my career or anything like that, join us next Friday. We'll plan to do it again. Stay safe out there. Be socially distant from each other. And if you're going to have sex, put on the you know hazmat suit. All right. Take care. We'll see you guys.